What's good people, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below, smash the like, hit the bell, those things help out a lot. As you know by now, YouTube does notify people when we upload, so make sure you hit the bell. Now today we've got a dope episode for you guys, and it comes straight down to hydro versus soil. Which one do you prefer? Now whether you're about to grow plants for the first time, or you got years of experience, it helps to know the differences between soil and hydro. You can achieve awesome results using both techniques, but they differ dramatically when it comes to feeding and overall management. Both methods are capable of producing healthy and productive plants, but require different equipment and management practices. When you're growing in soil, roots receive nutrients from organic matter and minerals in the soil, with help from the microbes in the food web of course. But in contrast, the roots of hydroponic plants extend either into air or water, and they receive key nutrients through liquid solutions during constant or intermittent feedings. Now some people may think hydroponic techniques are a modern invention. This form of gardening actually spans back to the hanging gardens of Babylon and the floating gardens of China. Bruh. That's a hell of a long time ago. Now there are some grows out there that are heavy advocates for the soil. Soil, 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 soil. And they may disregard hydroponic cultivation as an unnatural method that doesn't allow plants to reach full potential. But in truth, both soil and hydro techniques can render equally superb results. The end product literally depends on dialing in environmental conditions, meeting the nutritional and light requirements of the plants, and selecting high quality genetics from the get-go. Now soil and hydroponic cultivation are umbrella terms that cover a wider range of techniques. When it comes to soil, there's KNF, no-till, there's a bunch of options. And when it comes to hydrophonics, there's DWC or deep water culture, there's ebb and flow, bubble phonics, aerophonics, and a bunch more. So in today's episode, we're going to look at all the differences between hydro and soil, as well as the differences between costs and benefits and pros and cons and all that stuff. So if you're just starting off or thinking of switching from DWC to soil or from soil to DWC, this video is for you. But before we get into that, guys, just a reminder, if you guys are looking for grow equipment, Mars Hydro's got you covered. They've got grow lights, grow tents, all that good stuff, and you can save a bunch of money using the discount code. I can THC. I can THC. And it helps support the channel. And also, guys, if you want to cop beans for a whole year, then definitely check out the I can Seed Club. Beans for a whole year is going to be lit. A lot of people have signed up, so definitely join up. Without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Yes guys, so in today's episode we're going to look at the differences between DWC and Hydro. We'll compare the growing media, environment, nutrients, quality, difficulty, and everything else that you need to know. So let's start off with germination. Now all grows start with germination. Soil and Hydro growers can start seeds in the same way. Or use techniques exclusive to each or use techniques exclusive to each method. Usually starting your beans in a glass of water or in a paper towel will work great for both methods. But soil growers have the option of sowing the seeds directly into their final containers or garden pot. Whereas some hydro growers choose to sow into rockwell cubes that slot into net pots, which are then inserted into the hydroponic systems. Now I haven't done a ton of growing in hydroponic systems, I've only just started to dabble in DWC, but I've done a ton of research on the topic and looked at a lot of comparisons between soil and hydro growers. So if you got any suggestions as I'm going through the video, drop a comment down below and let me know what those are. I'm always open to advice. I learn a lot of stuff from you guys. Now when it comes to transplanting, hydro plants typically remain in the same net pot and hydroponic system for the duration of the growing cycle. But soil growers on the other hand tend to transplant more often depending on their preferences. Some growers actually swear by sowing seeds directly into their final home. Whereas other growers prefer to transplant them over time, constantly up potting just to give the root space to develop and have a more expansive root system. As I keep saying guys, every time you transplant up, the root ball gets bigger. And if you use mycorrhiza, whoo, crazy. Now when it comes to harvesting, there's virtually no major differences in harvesting soil versus hydroponic plants. Growers can choose to wet trim or dry trim, whichever you prefer. And don't forget, you still gotta properly cure your buds before you can use them. That goes for any growing style. Now when it comes to the medium, the growing medium is one of the major differences between soil and hydro. The term medium refers to the substrate that's used to sustain the life of the plant. As the name suggests, soil uses soil to supply the vital nutrients to the plants. Soil. Don't soil yourself. Bruh. Get it? Anyway, bad joke. <laughs> now the roots uptake macronutrients and micronutrients through the process of diffusion. Some soil growers administer synthetic nutrients to the plants to uptake it immediately, whereas others prefer to rely on organic matter within the soil. Over time, soil microorganisms help to unlock the nutrients within the organic matter and make it available to the plants. But with hydrophonic setups, water serves as a nutritional medium for the plant. However, the plants do need structural support in the area between the root zone and the stem to keep them upright in their net pots. So a 
water growers use substrates such as rock wool or coco coral or, or even clay pebbles for this purpose, just to hold the plant upright. And instead of soil, the roots are constantly or frequently exposed to a solution containing all of the nutrients required to grow healthy plants. Now remember, like I said, hydrophonic growing is like an umbrella term. It covers all sorts of different methods. So some systems such as DWC constantly submerge roots in water and use air stoves to ensure that the roots receive a steady supply of oxygen. But other methods such as ebb and flow only periodically bathe the roots in nutrient solution, allowing them to breathe in between the feeds. Now when it comes to nutrients, plants require specific minerals and elements in order to grow and survive. These substances fall into two major categories, macronutrients and micronutrients. Your macros are your nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, and your micros are more like the boron, zinc, manganese, iron, copper, and that sort of stuff. Now although plants grown in soil and hydro require the same nutrients, the way that these nutrients is administered and what form of nutrients, quantities, and all that stuff differs dramatically. You may want to check that out in further detail if that's something that you're interested in doing. Some growers growing in soil only use organic matter like manure, straw, wood chips, compost, worm castings, bad guano. Those are a great source of nutrients. These minerals break down slowly over time and provide the plants with a wide spectrum of nutrients. Now while it's an effective and sustainable option, organic matter doesn't contain immediately available nutrients. So starting with a high quality soil is key if you're using this method. Now other growers use techniques like Korean natural farming or KNF to create plant ferments and these are applied as a foliar spray or as a root trench to supply a broad spectrum of minerals. But many growers just prefer to go down the synthetic route using veg and flowering formulas of liquid or powdered nutrients that are immediately available to plants and administered according to a specific schedule. And that's fine, a lot of growers have great results with that. But like I said, a key benefit is that nutrients are available immediately to the plants. Now if you're growing in hydro, don't worry because hydro growers also have both both organic and synthetic options when it comes to delivering the correct amount of nutrients to the plants. Most hydro growers use bottle formulas containing optimal quantities of nutrients. Now, where soil growers can sometimes get away with feeling too much or too little due to the buffering nature of the soil, hydro growers can. Aside from trace minerals, your water doesn't inherently contain all the nutrient a plant needs. But not all hydro growers rely entirely on commercial nutrients. Some use fish manure as a source, aquaphonics as a form of hydrophonics actually uses connected tanks to live fish to dispense manure directly into the crops. And hydro growers will usually administer nutrient formulas into a reservoir. The most basic hydro system such as the Kratky method, which is a passive method with no electronics involved, contains only a single container to which the nutrients are directly added. But other methods like recirculating DWC requires growers to add nutrients into an external reservoir. And then a pump will distribute the solution to plants through a network of pipes. Now it may sound a little complicated but it's not that hard. Now when it comes to growing environments, despite the differences between soil and hydro, plants require the same environmental conditions. They need certain ranges of humidity and temperature throughout the seedling, veg, and flowering stages. Now you can actually run a soil or hydro setup indoors or outdoors, and there are of course benefits to growing indoors and benefits to growing outdoors. So now that you're more familiar with the differences and similarities between soil and hydro growing, let's dive a little deeper into how they compare when it comes to choosing one over the other. Because there are a few pros and cons when it comes to price, space, difficulty, flower quality, and all that good stuff. So by the end of this video, you should be able to make an informed decision about what method works best for you. Now when it comes to price, the price of a grow depends on a host of variables. Growing indoors will almost always cost you more money to begin with. However, this investment makes sense if you got a short and cold growing season or you want to keep things discreet if possible. If you're growing indoors, you may also need a grow tent, to grow light, and other investments. If you're growing outdoors, you got the good old sun. Now if you're growing with a basic Kratky system, it may not be too bad, or a simple DWC system that works great as well, but things can get a bit more expensive if you're opting for more complex hydro systems such as recirculating DWC because those require more pipes and individual containers, pumps, and an external reservoir. Now when it comes to space, both soil and hydro operations can be scaled down to fit into small spaces. Micro growing may be a bit difficult at times. You can definitely grow plants in a small container or in a bucket indoors using soil or the Kratky method. Larger hydro systems may start to cause issues. If you're growing in a larger indoor space, you may have more room for complex hydro systems with external reservoirs and a lot more. A lot of that room though you may not need if you're growing in soil. When it comes to the difficulty, if you have zero experience or if you've grown a few vegetables here and there in the past, growing in soil will prove less of a learning curve. But when it comes to hydro, the Kratky method and DWC serve as the easiest starting point for beginner hydro growers. These systems are compact, basic, and take up little room. And the fact that you can rely entirely on bottle formulas makes feeding easy. Now complex hydro systems are definitely more difficult than growing in soil. Investing in the right gear and setting up these systems requires a good amount of research. Plus you'll need to maintain the system during the grow and clean and repair it between operations. Now speed. Hydrophonic plants tend to grow faster than those in soil. Plants that are growing in a soil medium rely on the biological activity of the soil life to free up nutrients before they can be absorbed.
absorbed by the roots. Although adding synthetic fertilizer speed up the process, the soil still acts as a buffer and not all of these inputs stay around in the rhizosphere. The rhizosphere is the root zone. But with hydro setups, hydrophonic nutrients are constantly available to the plant roots and confined to a set space, which results in faster growth during the veg stage. So maybe if you're looking for the quickest harvest possible, it may be best to go with hydro. Or you can just pick some out of flowers. Those flower after just a few weeks of veg, regardless of soil or hydro. Now yield. The final yield from a soil or hydro grow depends on several variables. Is it an auto? Is it a photo? Are you using a small pot? Are you using a large pot? With all that aside, hydro grows almost always report larger yields from hydro plants than soil grown plants under the same condition. Perfect. Hydro plants tend to display faster and more vigorous growth during the veg stage, which results in the formation of more bud sites. Combine this with genetics predisposed to large, heavy colas, and you'll find yourself harvesting substantial Perfect. yields Perfect. in no time. Now, when it comes to the quality, both high quality and low quality plants can come out of soil and hydro systems. Again, the quality of the plant has less to do with the growing medium and more to do with the genetics and the management. That means you. What are you doing to your plant? Stop fucking around with it. Bruh. Those factors actually hold far more sway over the quality of the end product. It may be strange to hear this, but hydrophonic setups actually use up to 90% less water than soil. Certain hydro systems actually recirculate water, whereas others hold the smallest supply of water in a single container throughout the entire growth. Although some systems require are topping up, grows usually end up losing less water than they do when cultivating in soil, where runoff is the name of the game. Now next is pest pressure. Both hydro and soil plants are more predisposed to pest pressure when grown outdoors. Indoor soil plants are still prone to pest issues, like if you're bringing soil indoors, can introduce eggs and live pests into your growing environment, and that sucks. Now indoor hydrophonic plants are certainly not pest proof either, but they're less likely to fall prey to an infestation indoors. The pests just don't have soil to go and hide it. Now soil and hydro are both capable of producing top quality flowers. A lot of growers on this channel grow soil and a lot of growers use hydro as well. So drop a comment down below and let me know which you've used. And if you've grown in both already, let me know what the differences you found between the two and which one you prefer. Soil is the traditional growing medium that served growers for centuries. Sometimes the soil may be a little tricky to manage, but once you get into that groove, you're in the groove. When it comes to hydrophonics, if you get hydrophonics right, it allows for some genuinely monstrous results. So there are a lot of differences and similarities between the two. The biggest differences usually come down to feeding and management. Thankfully, you can achieve excellent results from both indoor and outdoor environments. And while soil allows growers more room for error in terms of feeding and a more hands-off approach when using mulch and no-till approaches, hydro uses less water overall. So which cultivation path will you tread? Drop a comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to smash the like button on your way out and hit the bell. But before you go, check out this video right here and this video right here and we'll see you on the next one peace fam peace.